morning, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining us there on the webinar. Just waiting for a few more people to join us and we will kick off shortly in a minute or two. OK, there. Right. Well, this morning we are going to talk about how to reduce the cost of invoice processing by 80 percent. And I'm delighted to welcome uh, Paul Martin from Smart Office to join us and uh, run through it uh, with us there. I think it's a, a very appropriate topic at a time like this. Um, I think COVID has probably fast forwarded a lot of us and it's probably something that we needed to get kicked off uh, sooner rather than later. But just for anybody who doesn't know us there, I'm just going to introduce uh, Pembroke. I suppose um, Pembroke came about there and um, the joining of two big Sage partners. And I suppose the thing we had in common there was our customer service. And uh, we pride ourselves on our, I suppose, our feedback of 99% satisfaction. And that is due to the product knowledge and expertise of the team here and ensuring that we can offer an excellent service around things like this, free webinars. And um, we're probably the only person who looks at premium cover whereby it's more than just picking up the call and uh, answering your initial queries there. So we focus very much on being able to answer everything for you and not have those quotations coming afterwards if you ask for additional work. But why also the Sage products, and this is something that we're connecting up with Smart Office on, is there's over half a million um, companies in the UK and Ireland using uh, Sage 50 there. So uh, you're not alone out there by choosing Sage 50. It's established um, well, over 40 years and half of that in the in Ireland as well. And it's something that we see that they're investing in. So we want to uh, ensure that we can bring additional uh, features around the product there that Paul is here for us. Uh, I'm delighted to look at some of the testimonials that people talk about uh, Pembroke there um, and some brand names you'll recognise, but it's actually the it's the terminology that they've used when talking about us. But without further ado, and more importantly, um, I'd like to pass over to Paul there, who's going to uh, show us there about saving time, please, Paul. Thanks, Stephanie, and um, thanks for giving us an overview and introduction and for organising this. Um, it's a great platform. As you said, it's very relevant at the moment um, in terms of what we're all facing with additional overheads and costs and, and how the future looks. So uh, it's great to be able to sit in front of some of your clients, your longstanding clients, uh, and to show them how we've collaborated um, on looking to maximise efficiencies in business. So. I'm going to uh, turn off my ugly mug now and share my screen so you can get to see uh, the Smart Office dashboard. And I'll give you a bit of background uh, about um, our company, uh, the technical details in the software, and then an overview um, of how the software works, the features, what we're looking to achieve. Obviously, at this point, um, I'd like to highlight, obviously, we're going to give a generic overview of the software and how it works and what it does. We'd encourage everyone to reach out to Pembroke and um, to set up a, a free scoping exercise for your individual business need, because although we're all using Sage 50 here, every finance function operates a little bit differently, has different needs, and that's exactly what Smart Office is designed for. So. Bear with me while I share my screen and Stephanie, you might give me the thumbs up when you can see. Yeah, should be coming there now, guys. Out of my side just yet.
that showing up there, guys? Not for me, just there, Paul. Um, uh, okay, I think, uh, yeah, I think you can go for it there. Okay, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone able to see that? Perfect. Okay, guys. So this is the central dashboard of Smart Office AP. Uh, very, very simple and um, very logic based in what we're trying to do in the software. And the idea is that it's all designed within the user in mind, the end user, the workflow and the finance function. So you'll see here it's set up on um, Google Chrome or any other browser. It's a cloud based software, which means that there's no uh, infrastructure, no download requirements. Basically, if you have an internet connection, you now have access to your digital finance function. Just some top line details, guys, around the security uh, and the technologies we use <clears throat> before I go in and show the actual tiles here in front of us. So the software is built on the Microsoft Azure platform. Primary uh, data site is in Dublin with two failover sites in Europe. Currently, that's in the Netherlands and France. So when we're using a uh, tier one Azure platform, it means that we adhere to the highest standard of data encryption and data protection. So 256-bit SSL encryption um, and full GDPR compliance as well. Okay, the primary way that we want information, documents in Smart Office is digital, because that's what we're all trying to get to, is to remove the paper, uh, the print, and the unnecessary workflow. So each client that comes on to Smart Office AP gets a dedicated email address on our domain. Um, for the example here, I'll use pimbrook at smartofficeap.com. And that becomes your central inbox for your finance function for invoices, credit notes, and supplier statements. If you already have one of these email addresses sent, set up, let's say it's invoices at pimbrook.com, we can do a forwarding rule or indeed you can forward any documents that come in yourself directly into the software. So there are lots of different ways of getting um, the information into the software. And obviously we're trying to remove as many steps as possible as the ingestion point. Because we're Sage technology partners and we work very closely with Pimbrook, we've, de we've developed a dedicated technology called an APL link. And that is what connects Sage 50 and Smart Office AP. That gives you direct access to your uh, customer list or your supplier list, uh, tax codes, non-ledgers, chart of accounts, departments, cost center, and anything else the way that your Sage 50 is configured. <clears throat> we pull that information directly into Smart Office and it can be exported out in two ways as well. What that crucially also means is that we can pull in POs, purchase orders from Sage 50, and GRNs also. And that's really where the power of the approval comes, which I'll show you in a little bit. So when I explain the uh, software generically, I normally start um, breaking it into three sections, guys. And I'll try to keep this nice and interesting, conscious that it's early on a Tuesday and we're talking about uh, finance software. So I'll try to keep it snappy, but I'd encourage everyone to, the Q&A session is open. Anything that you want more clarity on and um, more detail or any queries, stick them into the Q&A and we'll allow some time after the, the demo for myself and Stephanie to address. So the three sections are the top tiles, uh, which are back end and reporting and storage. The middle tiles, which is the day to day workflow. That's what everyone is doing day to day in their finance teams. And the bottom tiles, which are their bookends, the purchase orders and the statement reconciliation at the end. OK, so brief overview, guys, search and reporting. Every single document that comes into Smart Office AP is extracted via our AI brain and auto indexed. And what that basically means is every document that passes through our system is automatically stored for the revenue compliance seven years and it's unlimited storage and unlimited users on our platform. And it immediately is search and retrievable by any sort of metadata or index data. So that might be the supplier, the nominal ledger, cost center, department, document type, invoice number, PO number, 
date ranges, status, absolutely anything you can think of, right down to the level of character search. And what that basically means is that if you know nothing about the invoice data, but you know you bought a lamp, for instance, you type the word lamp into the table or the comment or table data search, and we will show you every invoice that has ever come through our system with that word or character or reference on it. And we'll break it down by supplier, transaction posting data, and we link you directly to the PDF document that came in. So lever arch files and wild file structures and uh, Windows Explorer are all gone immediately. This now becomes your central repository accessible anywhere in the world for all your, your documentation. Next tile, uh, drag and drop. So I told you at the start of the conversation that the primary way we all want data in is digital. It's easier, it's cleaner, it's more accurate, but that doesn't mean that we're still not going to receive paper post, paper invoices. So Smart Office AP can deal with that as well. When you get the physical document in, put it on your scanner or whatever capture method you're using, and you can either do a scan to email workflow, which is directly into the software, directly from the print or the MFP, or drag and drop if you've bulk PDFs, and you just want to drop them in here into the software, drop them in here and send for processing. And the same process happens. OK, so we can deal with all ways that they come in. Um, but again, because when you're dealing with scanned documents or marked documents, something written on or even scanned quality, we're at the mercy of the quality of the document. That's you and us. So digital documents are absolutely perfect. They arrive the same way all the time via PDF and scanned documents, while it can be handled, are obviously the least desirable for both you and us. Reporting, although Sage 50 has very comprehensive reporting tools, um, what we do is we double up on that so you can get the key data for your AP people directly in the software. So we have some default reporting set up here. You can see category scans, budget, suppliers, nominal ledger, departments, etc. But one of the key tiles and the one that's most frequently used is the task status report. And that's essentially understanding your people. So where is the invoice or statement or purchase order in the workflow? Who is it with? What status is it at? Is it on hold? Is it in approval? How long is it in? And what's the value? And you have that broken down by all your users directly in here, and you can set up notification and reminders as you need it. Very simple, but very powerful, because that's what we're trying to get to, is remove the bottlenecks and to get everything flowing through the process very simply. One of the most powerful pieces that we have here as well, and it's a very simple, but very powerful piece, is the ability to transfer responsibility. And that was obviously very relevant in COVID, but it continues to be uh, necessary in all finance functions. And you will leave illness, someone leaving the business. You need the continuity to continue. So we have transfer documentation here where you can transfer the responsibility directly to the line manager, the replacement, or someone that's doing cover. And once I hit transfer, the responsibility comes out of that person's workflow and notifies the new person saying, in this case, Adrian Kellen has the responsibility now for the approval and the workflow on this document. OK, just to elaborate a bit further on that as well. Everything that's done with Smart Office, as I said, is unlimited users, but everyone has detailed user permissions. So depending on when I log in or someone else logs in, the dashboard and responsibility will look different. What I can see and do depends on my level of access, and I'll only see what's relevant for me here. I'll only see what's in my alerts, my approvals, my review, or anything else. OK. So moving into the day to day workflow, guys. Um, we've got these two tiles which I take together, um, and I won't go too in depth on these uh, because they're uh, back end data and particularly the new documents. Um, but just to show you guys what the technology does and how it does it. So new documents is when a new supplier is set up and for the first time we see the invoice. 
So this will give you a sample of how the software and the AI brain works. So this is an invoice that's come in for the first time. It looks like any other invoice that we all have, and we have the key details that we need to take out. You'll see these boxes that are drawn around. That's our AI brain identifying what we need from the invoice, so VAT total, product codes, quantities, description, unit prices, what type of invoice or what indeed if it's a credit and order statement and the key reference data. And on the right hand side is a questionnaire, which is confirming what we've captured is correct. Very simple, no technology, no IT requirement, just answering the questions. And if you need to change something, you draw a box around it. Very, very simple. And you see our software will auto code it. So this, what that means in essence is that the onboarding process and the user experience is very, very simple. The technology actually isn't about technology, it's about people, user, usability and workflow. The second tile that I'm going to go into, guys, is alerts. Uh, and while we hope this is infrequent, um, it's not really down to us or you, it's more your supplier quality. So built into the software is the common problems that happen in AP. So the first thing we'll do when we receive an invoice <clears throat> is we'll scan it for issues. And if we find an issue, we will uh, quarantine it in alerts. In this case, this invoice has come in and we think that there are two things wrong. One, it's a duplicate. Um, we've already received this invoice from this supplier uh, previously. And also we're a little bit suspicious of the date range. Okay, and I'll tell you exactly what that means. So you click into the document and we'll produce on one single screen all your decision making data. You'll see the invoice on the left hand side. In the center, you'll see everything that we've captured and extracted. And you'll also see what we think is wrong. You'll see these red boxes here and on the right hand side, you'll, you'll see the explanation for why we've put this into quarantine. So in this case, the invoice number is a duplicate. So we've already received this invoice and we actually link you to the previous invoice so that you can confirm that if you need to. On here, we've got an amber warning or an orange warning, which means we think something is suspicious here, but we need you to confirm. In this case, the date range is very odd. It's an invoice from 2019, we're in 2022. That's very strange. The tolerance limit or the sensitivity of that can be set by the user. So you might have accounting periods that operate in the quarter, um, or monthly, bi-monthly, six-monthly, and we can set up what you guys would like us to alert you about. Very simple, very powerful, um, but it stops that duplication of work and problems further down the line. Approval, review, and confirm delivery. These are all different versions of the same workflow um, for different uses in different businesses. Approval really is the main tile. This is where everyone spends their time, and this is what we're trying to get to. So you'll see here it's broken down into tabular, invoice and credit notes, statements, purchase orders. You can search and filter by date ranges and all variations, including currency, and you can have a different piece for um, suppliers, invoice numbers, very granular level of detail. But as a central screen, you'll get all the invoices that are in for your approval broken down by supplier total value and when you drop it down all the invoices that are relevant and all of the headline detail and decision making detail our system deals with both nominal ledger invoices only and po and grn uh, depending on your own configuration and what you need to happen we can automatically route for nominal ledger such as utilities uh, electricity whatever it might be and we can also route based on location, cost centers, departments, job numbers, or any other unique identifier um, that can be automatically understood and picked up from the invoice or the PO. This uh, supplier is an example of someone that's operating POs and GRNs. So we've pulled in the PO and GRN from Sage directly, and they sit in the back end of the system. When an invoice arrives in, referencing that PO, we'll automatically set about to do validation. So we'll check for alerts as the first protocol, and then we will look for the PO and GRN relating to this invoice. Very simple people here in Smart Office, green is good, red is bad, okay? 
Green means that we've managed to do validation. Invoice matches the PO, matches the GRN, all is good with the world, okay? You can double check it here by just clicking into the document and we'll show you all the extracted data. You can have it set to auto approve if those three validation pieces match, or you can do manual or bulk level approval here as well. Whatever the business need is, it's customizable. The thing we're going to focus on today, just to show you a couple of features, is the problem. So we've got something that's highlighted um, as a variance. So we get an alert here, and then we click into the document. So the idea of Smart Office is that you should only be working off exceptions. So if 80% of your workflow automatically matches, brilliant. We'll make sure and validate all that for you. So it's very simple, very fast. We want you focusing on the issues. We want to present all of the data, the decision-making data on one central screen so that it's a single source of truth for everyone. Smart Office has an audit trail that's built directly into the software. So it means when you're a user that's logged in, anything that you do in the software is date and time stamped, whether that's putting it on hold, query, approval, rejection, whatever it might be. So that means when anyone logs in from anywhere around the world, you've got a central um, understanding on that invoice workflow. It doesn't live in paper on people's trays or in different inboxes. Everything is visible here. So I'll give you an example here. This is a terrible looking invoice. And if you had to look at 100 of these a day, you'd have a pain in your head. So what we do is a thing called universal view. For every invoice, we present the data to you in the same way. The decision making data at the top, the line item details below it, whether that's a single page invoice or a 10 page it'll still be presented in the same way for you. On the right hand side of the screen, we will give you the PO and the GRN detail. So <clears throat> you'll be able to view the PO directly in here if you want to do some validation, and you'll also be able to view the GRN that was it was matched to. So again, it's all about presenting uh, the data to you instantly so you can make a decision. In this case, you'll see here that we've highlighted a variance of one cent in dollars. Um, which is very, very sensitive and very powerful. You can set up whatever tolerance limit you'd like. You might consider a monetary amount uh, as a tolerance limit, absolutely fine, or it might be a percentage of the invoice variance. Totally up to you guys. But for the purpose of the demo, I'm just showing you how powerful it is and what it will pick up. On the right hand side, you'll be able to verify that the GRN that was booked in matches the invoice that we have here and where the variance actually came from. In this case, it's one cent, it will be approved, okay? But what we'll do up here is not only is it an AI and automation tool, but it's a communication tool. So the user can decide, I'm going to approve this, which in this case would happen. They can put it on hold because they need more data, and you can choose to notify the supplier that they're invoiced on hold, and um, so they, they get a notification, not expect payment, and they can also, the supplier, directly respond to you here via link, the automatic email that goes out. You can choose rejection, which is the same premise as hold. You can decide to notify the supplier of the rejection notice. It'll automatically CC the user that's logged in, and it'll automatically pull the supplier's email address out of Sage. You type in your rejection message here, and hit reject. And that will auto generate an email back to the supplier saying invoice number 1234 has been rejected. They have the option to respond. And again, that keeps everything central so you can see the audit trail on why this was rejected and what the supplier's response is. So, as I said, very, very simple, very, very powerful. Presenting all the data to you immediately so you can make better decisions. Review is basically, I'm not going to go into that tile today for. Um, uh, to keep this nice and snappy, but it operates the exact same way as approval. It's just for a different um, use in the business. That might be upper level management, that might be the CFO, or that might be a particular type of invoice workflow that you're trying um, to keep an eye on. That might be for early payment discounts, might be for credit terms, it might be for problem suppliers. And essentially what that does is when we identify any of those things that you've told us, We'll also put it into review and we'll notify someone in the business. And it might be done on a monetary level. Every invoice over 20,000 needs to get approved by or reviewed by the MD. 
or whatever use case. It's a completely dynamic tile um, and it varies widely from different businesses. Confirm delivery. If you are not using PO and GRN as a mechanism, um, you still want to confirm that you got the goods. And this is really important um, and it happens in every business. So <clears throat> if there is no digital or even paper trail um, around, did I receive these 10 laptops into Cork? We can automatically set up delivery workflows. And what that means is when we identify an invoice from a particular supplier or in a particular nominal or cost center or job, is that we automatically route it to the store or shop or goods in person in that location. And that is the first, pro, or first process, first hurdle uh, to get by, which is they will get a notification either on their desktop or their phone. They can look at the invoice and essentially we're requesting confirmation they have received this. You can do that in bulk, or it might be the case that yes, I did receive a delivery, but only three of these, or I only received one of these, whatever it might be. And that is the first notification directly back then into your AP team, where they can match the essential, essentially um, GRN that we have created against the invoice, and they can decide whether it's to be approved, a credit needs to be raised or rejected, whatever needs to happen. Very simple again, but very powerful. Okay, the last tile here, guys, is upload and that's pretty self-explanatory after we've done all of the fancy uh, ai verification and the workflows and the approvals everything ends up in upload and that is connected directly into sage 50. so you get a final summary screen here of all of the approved invoices based on supplier individual invoice and values and you can decide, uh, and again, it depends on each individual user, whether you want to set an automatic upload on a daily, a weekly basis, or whether you want this as the final review screen and you manually do the upload. So I am closing off July, so I only want to upload documents that relate to July. And I hit upload, or I can gener generate an export file for further interrogation as well. Again, this final piece validation is totally up to the end user and it's completely customizable. But essentially everything that arrives here in the upload screen is already approved for payment. That is the idea here. It's gone through the checks and balances, your approval process, and it is considered ready to pay. When that goes to Sage, anything that does arrive in Sage via the APL link is considered as good, a good invoice, ready to pay and that the balances, your supplier balance in Sage, should be correct. And then that leads me nicely into the last thing I'll talk about today, guys, uh, which is statement reconciliation. Uh, and then I promise I'll stop talking at you guys. So after we've done all of this necessary work throughout the month, it's then some poor soul's job um, at the close of the month, they receive supplier statements with 10, 50, 100 lines in them, and they have to verify that we do indeed owe that 40, 50, 60,000 to that supplier. So normally it's a process here I call tiers and a ruler, um, where everyone is checking the line items to make sure that the invoice is approved and that we can pay this amount to the supplier. So we've decided to fix that as well in the exact same way and same temp technology. <clears throat> so the suppliers send in their supplier statements directly into the software and our, our AI brain starts reconciling automatically. You'll see here, uh, I'll give you an example of Food Network, the date it was received, the date of the document, so the month that it relates to, if it's reconciled or not, and the last time that someone uh, attempted work on this, basically, so you can check the workflow. So in this case here, you'll see on the left-hand side, you'll see all the line items on the supplier statement, date, invoice, and value. And on the right-hand side, you'll see where we have matched. But more importantly, you will see if there's anything missing, any documentation will automatically highlight as 0%. And you'll also see the status. Just because we've received the invoice, doesn't mean we're going to pay it. So you will see it at the various stage that the invoice is in, whether it's on hold, um, awaiting approval, uh, approve, review, or ready to upload. And anything that is in um, 
uploaded is considered um, good, that is gone. It's gone through the approval process. Or anything that's considered ready to upload also has gone through the approval process. Anything else before that will be considered as a suggested accrual because it hasn't gone through the process yet. And this is a live dashboard where as it moves through the system, it'll update. And if it moves from awaiting approval to uploaded, then it'll be considered um, reconciled. When you hit the reconciliation button, that is the close off period. That is when we've reconciled a statement and we've agreed an amount that we're going to pay. One of the most important things that the statement does, reconciliation does as well, is we link you directly to the invoice. So we find the invoice and we'll allow you to interrogate it. So you can click on the invoice, You'll see the status that it's at, why it might be on hold or what the reason might be that it hasn't been paid based on the audit trail. It'll tell you it appears in the statement. You can add internal comments. <clears throat> and here is a very powerful feature that we haven't touched on yet. As I said, we capture absolutely every line item and every character of the, the uh, invoices that come in. But we also do something a little bit more intelligent than that. So we capture your products. First time we see an invoice, we understand all the line items, car codes, descriptions, and prices. And every time that you receive an invoice, referencing those car codes or descriptions again, we will tell you where the price has moved up, down, left, or right. And then you can set reporting based on a tolerance percentage. And it might be 1%, it might be nothing, it might be 10%, depending on your use case. And we will create a price watch alert feature. Anything over 5% Stephanie needs to be noticed, uh, notified. Anything over 10% Paul and Stephanie need to be notified. And then you can extract reporting directly on this as well, which will allow you to build a supplier profile on price movements. Very, very handy tool on, first of all, price controls, which is a major topic at the moment, but also supplier reviews. So you can instantly um, catch if there's price creep from a supplier, um, are also a consistent pattern of price increases, et cetera. Really, really powerful, really, really simple again, guys. So at that, guys, um, Stephanie and other members of my team that are on here can verify, I could probably talk about this for hours because everyone has uh, a different use case and there's a lot more under the hood here that we just can't get into in a webinar. So as I said, I'd encourage everyone to reach out to um, Pembroke um, book a free demo and an assessment and a scope uh, and I'd be more than happy to talk with everyone for as long as they'll allow me to talk and um, but for now guys thanks very much for listening and hopefully there'll be some interesting questions in the Q&A thank you thanks Paul that that was great uh actually I think you uh you had me very much on that price increase I think that is relevant to all particularly at the at the moment to have that quick glance that we may we may get too caught up in um, in trying to get invoice processing done when, when we're only maybe it's too late in the six months accounts. We're seeing one nominal code shoot up on expenses, but we haven't had time to rectify it. Um, so that that certainly I think is uh, very relevant. Um, we have the Q&A open, so just a couple of questions there I'm going to run through, just conscious of everybody's time. And I suppose just to reiterate on Paul there is that um, you know, once that once the lines are closed, uh, please email. I'm going to share some details there with you. Um, now, I'll just pop that back up. The uh, contact details there. Uh, yeah. Well, while you're doing that, Stephanie, yeah, you're dead right. Um, I think the challenge in all finance functions at the moment is time. We're all yeah. in a rush to get everything processed through, pay the supplier, and keep business flowing, um, and that's really important. What smart office is designed to do is not to replace people or to claim that we can automate 100%, but to allow people focus on what they should be focusing on, which is price variances, problems, issues, credit terms. Um, and if we can remove 80% of the stuff immediately at the front, which we um, is the topic here, then the 20% is where your value will be, where you should be looking at that nominal, the price increases, the variances. No, uh, look, absolutely. And I think you're you're right. I mean, it's not the intention to replace people because to be fair to most people, they don't get the whole remit of their job done in the first place. Uh, if you if you look at any any job spec, so it's actually trying to cover more and more prominent ones. 
Um, just a quick uh, couple of questions there. Um, some of the stuff there, I think that people were picking up on. Um, unlimited users, did we hear that correctly? That's in the price yeah. structure? Yeah, that's uh, a, a wireless claim. Unlimited users, unlimited storage. So it doesn't matter how many documents, doesn't matter how many um, users that need to be set up. That includes internal users, or it might include accountants, um, support agents like yourself, Stephanie, or whoever okay. it might be. The only thing that Smart Office is priced on is documents processed. So invoices, credit notes, and statements, which makes it really flexible and scalable. Uh, okay. And that's the idea. Great. You you touched on the onboarding there. Um, I suppose just if you were on an average, I suppose just to give people some indicative time there. I mean, is it days, weeks, months to to onboard this? Typically, what you're looking at is about a four week project. Um, not that it takes four weeks of of work. Um, but generally, the way we structure it with our onboarding team is one training session per week. Um, one to two hours, depending on the complexity of the workflow. Um, so about four to five um, training sessions from our onboarding team um, and a little bit of upfront configuration, which is done by us in dark rooms. So about a four to five week project time. Right. And actually, that probably leads to the next question there is, so obviously I have 10 suppliers, uh, just interpreting this message here. I've obviously got 10 suppliers. And they were all suppliers when we were doing the onboarding. But hey ho, as soon as we uh, were finished the onboarding, supplier number eleven turns up, and we haven't had any um, any work with you on that supplier. Do we go back to you, or is that no? Once we have done, let's say, the hard work, the configuration of a particular workflow, and um, setting up a new supplier is thirty to sixty seconds. So. You set up a new supplier on Sage, as you always do. Yep. That gets imported into Sage, supplier details, tax codes, nominal ledgers, etc. And the first time an invoice arrives from that supplier, as you see the new document tile, which I touched briefly on, it'll show up there. So this is the first time we've seen oh, okay. it. Yeah. We will. Our brain will extract what we understand based on your workflows. And then there's a confirmation which takes 30 or 60 seconds where we ask you some questions on it, you answer them, and then that supplier is set up. Every time that we see an invoice from that supplier thereafter, we know exactly what to do with it. Right, okay. And I, what I was also just, I should just noticing myself there, you talked about obviously the, the paper trail that we can't move some suppliers um, away from to begin with. I suppose that's very interesting because that probably would have been maybe a barrier where so I can get 50% of my suppliers on. And I just keep trying to tip away, getting those paper people on that. And did I hear you saying you, you connect in scanners and things like that into the, yeah. you can actually read it automatically? OK, that's it, because basically the the ingestion point that we're operating for Smart is just an email address. So on all modern scanners or printers um, and uh, probably for a long time, you can do a function that's called scan to email. Um, yeah. And all we're doing is setting up your smart office button there, your scan to email workflow, and it goes directly in, like it was sent directly to your um, your email address. So very, very simple, one or two minute configuration, and that addresses the paper um, problem, let's say, if, if we want to, to refer to that. But I think most people, certainly most clients that we can see, COVID has accelerated the digital agenda a huge amount. It really is in the single digits of the amount of paper people are receiving now in the invoice workflow. No, it's true, but I suppose it, it, it means we can set it all up and then we can start introducing new suppliers as they move away. Uh, Clodagh there, um, just to confirm, yes, uh, it wasn't about the number of users. So what we'll do is we'll pick that up with you, Clodagh, afterwards on the pricing of the documents and we can go through that. Uh, last one we'll try and sneak in there, Paul, if you don't mind, is you did talk about three-way matching. Um, did I pick up there is that we can still do a kind of a process by a smart office if we don't do it by a sage? Uh, absolutely. So de depending on the individual workflow, whether they use just POs and no GRNs, um, just mm -hmm. GRNs and no POs, which exists out there as well, um, or none of the above, um, which is a nominal ledger routing uh, process based on 
you know, location or job codes. Smart Office can handle all of those validation um, pieces. Also, if people aren't using the functionality um, in Sage for POs or goods receiving, Smart Office does have a module as well, um, which is PO Pro. Might be a separate um, <clears throat> uh, demo to go through with you, Stephanie, which mm. is a full requisition system, um, which is a PO uh, generation, approval, budget holders, etc., and a digital GRN section directly in the software as well. So basically mimicking that process. Excellent. OK, well, what we'll do is I'm conscious of everybody's time um, there and I appreciate everybody who's joined us there this morning and particularly Paul there for giving up the time and showing us that. I think it's uh, something there of real relevance at the moment. Um, but uh, I think we can uh, we could, as you say, talk all day uh, about how to how to help people. But uh, I'll certainly pass on the details and um, we'll follow up again. So thank you very much. Yeah. Absolutely. Guys. Thanks very much for having me. And as I said, um, I love talking about it. So everyone reach out and I'll talk some more. No problem. All right. Cheerio, Paul. Thanks a million. Thanks very much, guys. Bye bye.